Self-driving cars in India will be a disaster. I've seen comments like this on videos across our channel for years now, and if I'm being honest, there was a small part of me that genuinely believed this. But now there's a company called Swayat Robots that's proving everybody wrong. Check out this video. This company has turned a regular Mahindra Bolero into an autonomous car that can drive through real traffic in India. And the company's founder, Sanjeev Sharma, claims that they've achieved level five autonomous driving capabilities, which is a huge claim considering no company in the world has reached this stage of autonomy in cars. Even Tesla, the company known for its driverless technology innovation, has only achieved a level two autonomy in their vehicles. But what's surprising is that Swayat Robots has managed to do all of this innovation at just a fraction of the cost. According to this interview with Sanjeev, the company raised $3 million back in 2021, but they've used just 650,000 of this. And now they've raised another $4 million, this is the news this week, for their R&D purposes. They essentially have $6.3 million in the bank, and they're gonna be using these funds to build a scalable version of their level four autonomous driving technology. And at first, I thought that Swayat Robots wanted to compete with car companies like Tesla, but that's actually not the case. In fact, Sanjeev wants to be a technology supplier to other car companies. Initially, they're gonna start selling this technology to the military and also to the autonomous trucking industry because Sanjeev says that the trucking market in the United States alone is worth $800 billion. He's already in touch with truck fleet owners in the United States regarding transfer of technology. And the thing that really surprised me here was finding out that unlike most Indian tech startups that are based in Bengaluru or NCR or Mumbai, Swayat Robots is actually innovating out of the city of Bhopal. The city isn't really known for its tech, but I first came across this startup while researching for our top 10 Madhya Pradesh startups video, and you can check that video out up here if you're interested. All right, now I wanna to talk to you guys about Odoo, a one-stop platform for all of your day-to-day -day business operations. They offer 70 plus applications to fulfill all of your business needs, and in the past, we've already talked about their e-commerce builder, their invoicing app, and their CRM tool, so this time, I wanna focus on their project management app. As a business owner or as a freelancer, you're often working on multiple projects at a time and keeping track of them all can be exhausting. And this is where Odoo's project comes in. See, with project, you can get a comprehensive view of all of your ongoing projects through different view options. You can keep track of your project's progress, deadlines, budgets, and resources all in real time from a single place. And you also have the flexibility to customize your view. So you can use the Kanban view, for example, to organize your projects by different stages where all of the tasks are shown in the form of cards with all of the key information at the front. Then you also have the Gantt view, which helps you to have an overall perspective on on your business and see who's working on which project or how long it's gonna take for projects to be completed. And you can also use the list view too, which allows you to perform batch actions. And that's not all because within the project app, you can schedule calls, add notes and files wherever necessary, keeping all of your communication, emails and tracking in one place. And a big thanks to Odoo for sponsoring this video. But in case you're still not convinced, you can actually use Odoo Project without spending a single rupee because Odoo offers their first application for free Free for life. Now, if that sounds interesting to you, and it definitely should, you can find a link to their website in the description and also in the pinned comment down below. All right, now moving on to the next news item here. This news has not yet been confirmed by the company, so do take it with a grain of salt. But according to multiple reports, it looks like Ola Electric has received approval from SEBI for their IPO. According to these reports, the company is planning on raising 7,250 crore rupees through this IPO. 550 crore rupees of this is gonna be raised through selling fresh shares and the remaining 1,750 crore rupees will come from existing shareholders who are planning on selling their shares in the company. And with more than 50% market share, Ola Electric is the leader in the electric scooter segment. So this should be an interesting IPO for sure. All right, next up in the news, but continuing to talk about electric scooters here, it looks like Aether Energy's revenue for FY24 is actually a decline from their revenue in FY23. So the company made 1,781 crore rupees in revenue in FY23, which was a 4X increase over their FY22 numbers, but that growth seems to have died down now. In fact, the company made just 1,754 crore rupees in revenue in FY24, which of course is a decline from their numbers from FY23. 
And this decline is especially surprising when you look at how much their customers actually love their scooters. Most people who own Aether scooters love the quality of these vehicles, but despite all of this love, Aether's business just hasn't been able to keep up with that. Despite being the first made in India electric scooter company in India, Aether is currently ranked fourth in terms of number of scooters sold. So what went wrong? Well, the simple answer is their obsession with quality and the lack of focus on marketing. In fact, at one point, the company was making each scooter for 5 lakh rupees and selling them for just 1.25 lakh rupees. I'm really just skimming the surface here. If you want all of the details and you want to better understand the journey of Aether, Bunkudge actually recently made a video about it. You can find that up here. But now moving on to the next news item, is Stoa School dead? So recently, the Ken published this piece that claims that Stoa School is dead. And Stoa School claims to be India's best alternative to an MBA and has been in operation for four years now, conducting 15 cohorts with around 1,500 students and even made close to 16 crore rupees in revenue in FY23, which is a number that's grown consistently. Now, while the Ken article did suggest that the company had shut down, Stoa School's co-founder says that while they've stopped taking in new students into their programs, they haven't shut down completely. Instead, they're saying that they've just hit pause and they're reevaluating their next steps. And according to this N-Track report, Stoa had actually paused admissions back in 2022. So we really have no idea what's going on inside of the company, but the co-founder said that they'll be giving more details regarding the direction that Stoa is going to be taking by August. All right, next up in the news, according to an ET report, it looks like Cred wants to get into the secure lending business. Now, just to clarify, secured loans are the ones where you put up collateral in exchange for the loan. That's the reason why the loans are cheaper compared to unsecured loans where you don't need to put up any collateral. And Cred already has a presence in the unsecured lending business through Cred Cash. And in fact, Cred is dispersing loans worth 1,800 to 2,000 crore rupees every single month. And more than 90% of the revenue that the company generated in FY23 actually came from Cred Cash as well as their bill payment service called Cred Max. But now the RBI has made it expensive for NBFCs and banks to give out unsecured loans, and that could be one reason why Cred wants to get into the secured loans business. But Cred isn't the only company getting into this space. Just last month, PhonePay launched their own secured lending platform, and Policy Bazaar is also scaling their secured lending business in the housing market too. All right, next up in the news, SaaS company Kissflow, which offers workflow automation software, has laid off 11% of their workforce. They're saying that this is part of a restructuring process and they had 400 employees before the layoffs but according to the company layoffs have affected people across India the United States and the UAE region now this is the same company that made news back in 2022 when they gifted five BMW cars to their senior employees for loyalty they claim that 90% of the affected employees have already been placed in other companies and the remaining 10% will be placed soon all right, now let's move into the funding news segment for today's video. So this week, Indian startups raised a total of $187 million, which is lower than last week's $343 million. So let's take a look at some of the companies that have raised funds this week. First of all, we have Gurugram-based Battery Smart, which is a battery swapping service provider for EVs, and they raised $65 million in their Series B round, valuing the company at $340 million. After that, we have Bengaluru-based consumer electronics company Incal Technologies, which is a trademark licensing company that makes consumer electronics products for companies like Acer and Black & Decker, and they raised $36 million in their Series A round. Following this, we have Mumbai-based D2C skincare brand Foxtail, and they raised $18 million in their Series B round. After that, we have Bengaluru-based Ethereal Machines, which manufactures precision engineering components for the aerospace and electronics industry using their proprietary CNC machines, and they raised $13 million in their Series A round. Then after that, we have Ola Electric. They raised $13 million in debt ahead of their IPO. And then finally, we have Delhi-based drone delivery startup Sky Air, and they raised $4 million in their Series A round. All right, that is all the startup news that I have for you guys this week. I really hope you enjoyed the video. But before I let you guys go, there's a video that we just made about the top 10 startups from Jharkhand, and it's gotten so many positive comments, but for some reason, the algorithm just isn't recommending it to people. So please go check it out. If that sounds interesting to you, you can find that video in the top right corner of your screen, and I will catch you in the next one.